Hello YouTube and how are you all doing today and today I'm bringing you a video of F1 2012 gameplay of the Kimi Raikkonen Lotus while I discuss and talk about the situation at Lotus F1 team in general happening this year, currently, right now, in Austin and for next year. So let's get into it and let's get into it and what is the first point of view, I have so many I don't know what order to put them in, but uh, the situation with Lotus F1 team is a rather of a pickle with many rumours, speculation, speculating so many different types of stories and different rumours. What order they all go in is kind of confusing. Um, and I sort of have my own points of view on the situation because obviously people are saying different things and obviously they're not going to deny it and they're going to say it's not and it is and blah 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 and so on and so on and it is one big major headache for all of us. Uh, hardcore F1 fans who want to know what's going on um, and everything like that and hopefully I can put things into perspective May I'm hoping some of the things I talk about uh, some of you are not going to know so it's all going to be all news for you and so on so anyway let's get started uh, Lotus has confirmed that Hikikova Line will be racing their, their um, number one car for the net for the last two races of the season which is which is circuit of americas and interlagos america and brazil and they starts off as of this weekend um and i believe hikikova line was um the number three choice for the lotus seats but let's start from the beginning with kimi Raikkonen. now kimi Raikkonen, as we all should know by now has signed a deal for ferrari for next year and a year uh after that however uh, recently he's been suffering from back pre uh, back problems which was caused from 2002 2003 I believe with Salba um, however uh, as you all know Mercedes Ferrari and Lotus are all joint into a battle for second third uh, yes second third and fourth um, which is all counted on lots of millions of getting paid um, in them in finishing in them positions I won't go into that detail that will be for another video um, but however, uh, with my theory is that Kimi Raikkonen, Kimi Raikkonen turned around and says he's uh, opted to do his back surgery now, uh, even though there's only two races left, uh, because he doesn't want it to ruin his preparations of next year with Ferrari. However, I believe it is more Ferrari telling him to do it now, because obviously Lotus uh, seem to be on better form than Ferrari at the minute, and could easily catch catch them up if not overtaken within the last two races of the season to get that extra place in the standings to get that extra money which uh, Lotus and Ferrari both want uh, which Lotus could actually do more with I should say but Ferrari would like the more money anyway uh, however I believe yes I believe Ferrari did tell Kimi Raikkonen to go for his back surgery now not only one does it help Kimi Raikkonen to recover in time for his preparations of next year in the Ferrari red car um, but also it gets Kimi Raikkonen out of the racing seat and gives Lotus a kick in the teeth so that is my theory of Ferrari stepping their nose in for that looking after number one um, uh, so yes, so uh, obviously Lotus um, understood Kimi Raikkonen's decision and couldn't couldn't really refuse to say no. And obviously Kimi Raikkonen is really pissed off about not being paid by the team, which is another extremely long story. Uh, I seriously, don't think ten minutes is going to be enough to fit all this in, but I'm going to try. So getting back on track with Kimi Raikkonen out of the car, having back surgery and being ready for next year, and helping Ferrari of having him out of the car. Um, Lotus turned their attention to their number one favourite driver, which they also want to sign for next year, depending whether they do finalise this uh, sponsorship deal that they can't, uh, supposedly have, was Nico Hulkenberg. Now, Nico Hulkenberg visited Endstone, and he turned around and said he visited Endstone to discuss the last two races of the season with them, and also to discuss next year. Um, uh, Nico Hulkenberg announced that he turned down the option to drive this two remaining races of the year simply because it was too confusing, no, no, not too confusing, should I say, it was too complicated and had a very high risk of him having to deliver straight away, um, which could possibly affect his chances of racing for them next year if he underperforms. Uh, because he's never driven that car, and so on, so on, so on, and he sees it. Uh, he sees it. Uh, he sees it as too much of a risk, um, and opted out of it. However, the rumor for this 
is, is that Ferrari once again stepped into their nose because they know that Nico Hülkenberg is on his top form as he always is. No matter what car he's driven in in his F1 career, he's always got it up by the top, no matter how bad it is. And that Ferrari stepped their nose in, concerned about this situation, and uh, told him no. Now you're probably thinking, how did Ferrari step their nose in and told Nico Hülkenberg? Well, that is simple, because... Nico Hülkenberg races for Sauber, which uses Ferrari engines, which is, uh, have a extremely good relationship with Ferrari. And so Ferrari butted their nose in and said, look, if you do this, and if they do come in front of us in the standings, our friendship could be torn. And that's another rumour. Whether it is true or not, we don't know. Uh, Ferrari hasn't obviously denied this, but they haven't admitted this. And Nico Hülkenberg will never admit this, and he turns around and goes, no, it wasn't Ferrari, it was me opting to say no, because it is too much of a high risk. What one you believe is up to you. Um, the fact is, we'll only be told stuff, and it's, it's F1, it's politics, it's one big head fuck for all of us fans, because we don't know what the fuck is right, what's not. Um, I, I sincerely believe that people in F1 tell more lies than the fucking lawyers. That's my opinion. Uh, this is why people like Jack Villeneuve was hated so much in Formula 1 because he hated the politics and he told them what they thought and they didn't like it and blah 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 blah. Anyway, their second opted choice, I'm not too sure many of you know this, was Michael Schumacher. And he's a manager has announced that Michael was the second driver to be... Um, opted for the last two races of the season with Lotus. However, Michael did think about it for a little time, but did not take too long for the answer to be no. The reason why he said no is, according to his manager, is that he's enjoying life right now. That's right, he enjoying riding his horses and stuff like that. I suppose the G-Force on the horses is a lot less and gives him less headaches. Than, than the cars. He's getting on and everything like that. So, a wise decision, and he probably sort of knew that he couldn't really do much in the last two races. So, he was probably a no. He said life is good at the minute, but I think he just didn't want to damage his reputation anymore and stuff like that. Anyway, their third driver was Hickey Cove Lining. Now, this is a really good choice because Hickey has been racing this year. Well, not racing. He has been driving this year in the Friday morning practice sessions. And so he knows the cars of this year and he has the knowledge and everything like that. He's keep up to date. He's informed. And also... Lotus use Renault and Caterham use Renault, so there's going to be no bickering and Caterham's at one end of the grid while Lotus is at the other. So this was a pretty much a done deal and after two days of negotiating and terms, it's done. Now what does this mean for Hikikova Lining? Now Hikikova Lining, however, has uh, said that he does not expect these last two races of the season in the Lotus um, to have any effect on his uh, race drive for next year. Now, Lotus have turned around and said their number one target for next year is Nico Hülkenberg, um, simply for the fact that he he's raw talent and has never been given the opportunity. But that simply lies on this so-called sponsorship investment deal that they're meant to be getting. So, therefore, nothing actually has been put pen or paper and being confirmed um, if this doesn't go ahead then their second choice will be Maldonado who is leaving Williams where while Felipe Massa is joining Williams and Maldonado brings in 30 million a year to a team 30 million Jesus Christ that's like a lot of freaking money that's like what so 30 million a year is their choice if they do not get the sponsorship deal investment if they do get the investment then obviously it is Nico Hülkenberg however I hope that Kobe Lyon if he does extremely well in the last two races this year may have some impact on next year's lineup but once again, Hickey Kovalarden has turned around and says he doesn't expect this to have any impact on next year and simply is just expecting the last two races of the season and that is it. But as a fan favourite of Hickey Kovalarden, I really do hope that this does help his chance, if not to get into Lotus, but to seal a deal with Caterham again next year because it is a big shame that a man with such talent like him and Timo Glock has simply been pushed out to the side into the scums of the scumps of the backliners and everything of Formula 1 just because of pay drivers 
commenting and this is another topic of mine but anyway guys i hope that clears it up for now uh this has been fsg um if you like the video please give it a likes up if you didn't understand it listen to it again